all that photography is, is capturing light. So you have light coming in through a little hole and it either hits your film in the back or a sensor on the back. And it's how you control that light that determines the photo that you're capturing. Now we'll get into composition later, but the main thing we're gonna understand here is how does a camera work and what are the five ways that you can control the light coming into your camera? So the first way of controlling the light that comes into your camera is with aperture. So your aperture is the hole that the light comes in through. This is also referred to as the iris, which is kind of like your eye, but this could be really small or it could be really big. Obviously it being bigger will let in more light. With iris or your aperture, an important thing to be aware of is it doesn't just affect how much light's coming in, it also affects your depth of field. So this is like right now I'm in focus, but what's behind me is out of focus. That's because my iris is open almost all the way. However, if I close it and make it smaller, not only is it letting in less light, but it's gonna make it so that everything is in focus. So with landscape photography, when you want everything in focus, you might be more at like F11 or a much smaller iris. Whereas with portrait photography, when you want only the subject to be in focus, you'd be more at like f1.2 or f1.8. Um, and that'll make it so that just your subject's in focus, but everything in the back is kind of like a soft blur. The second way to control the light coming into your camera is with a shutter. A shutter is if you imagine your windows and you want to block all the light, a shutter is the thing that actually closes and stops light from coming into the camera. Now when you take a photo, what you're actually doing is opening the shutter for a set amount of time and then the shutter closes. Otherwise you'd be completely overexposing your film or sensor in the back. So there's something called shutter speed, which is how long that shutter is open. And obviously the longer it's open, the more light will come in. And so a faster shutter speed will create a darker image than a longer shutter speed. The second thing with shutter speed is if you take a photo with a long shutter speed of something that's not moving and your camera's not moving, it's fine. But if you take a photo where the subject's moving or the camera's moving, then all of a sudden your end result is gonna be a really blurry looking photo. So typically as a general rule, you don't wanna shoot slower than like 1 80th of a second. If you get much slower than that, then all of a sudden you're gonna start noticing blurriness from your hands shaking or from the subject moving around. The third thing that affects light is called ISO. Now with film, when the light hits it, different types of film are more sensitive to light than others. So something with a higher ISO will get overexposed a lot faster. We've taken this into the digital world as well. And so with ISO, you could have a lot of cameras, photo cameras, their ISO is gonna be native at 100. And so it's gonna look the very best at ISO 100. Now you could go up, let's say to 25,000 ISO, and it's gonna be way more sensitive to light. So you could snap a photo when it's completely dark and it'll look like day. The downside to this is the higher your ISO, the more noise you're gonna get in your photo. So you might notice some photos at night look very noisy, especially on phones. That's because the ISO is being turned up. And so you typically don't wanna turn up your ISO unless you have to. And every camera is gonna have different noise levels at different ISOs. A lot of time this is based on the sensor size. So a really small sensor like a phone sensor isn't gonna do as well with low light, but a larger sensor typically can go to a higher ISO and will do a lot better job. The fourth thing that affects light coming to your camera is the light source. So obviously me bringing in an additional light source or a strobe and me creating light is going to have a big effect on the photo. So this is what it looks like with a light source. And this is what it looks like if I turn that same light source off. Now on this topic, you can go really in depth as far as all the different types of light sources you can use and how to position them and whatnot. And that will have one of the biggest effects on your photography is knowing how to use a good light source or how to position your subject in front of a natural light source that's gonna be the best looking. And then the last piece is anything that blocks or filters your light source. So on my lens, like if you imagine sunglasses, I could put what's called an ND filter, which is like sunglasses in front of it, and that'll block out a lot of the light. In a similar way, I could take a black panel or cloth 
and I could cover a light source to block out the light source and that would have a big effect on it. There's also different types of filters. So I could use a polarized filter similar to polarized sunglasses where it sees through the water. This will have a big effect on reflections and um, the color of the sky. And there's tons of different filters you can use for different reasons. But these are all forms of blocking light or filtering light so that you can control it. So now that you understand the five things that affect the lighting coming into your camera, you probably have a better understanding of how a camera works, but we haven't talked about how to actually apply that or change the settings on your camera to use it. So in the next lecture, we're gonna talk about how to get the most professional looking photos with a simple trick and how to actually do the settings for it.